Today, I'm going to convert one of these Lulu lemon mirror to something much, much more useful. These are exercise mirrors and they cost upward of about 1500. But because Lulu lemon shut the whole thing down, these mirrors are basically good as bricks. You can use them as regular mirrors, but otherwise nothing else. That's a shame. Behind this mirror is basically a smart TV. There's a TV panel behind it running Android OS operating system. But the whole thing is locked down, so there's no way you can load up YouTube apps or anything like that. Nothing else. Good as bricks, like I said. Since nobody is using them as what they are intended, which is the exercise mirror, I see these mirrors as low as $200. Sometimes even free because nobody wants them anymore. They're just taking up space. And by the way, this mirror is crazy heavy. I'm guessing 100 pounds. Replacing the motherboard to something else is relatively simple. Down on the bottom, assuming that you have the mirror stand, all you have to do is release four Phillips. Next up, there's several Phillips screws. Release them all. It can be pretty time consuming releasing all of these Phillips screws, so I'm just going to use a cordless screwdriver. This no cry cordless screwdriver is so nice. You can see my review of it in another video right here. Once all the screws are removed, go ahead and lift up this metal cover. It is crazy heavy, by the way. After lifting the metal cover out, look at the LCD panel. Look for any identifications of it. Here you can see my panel is LM40 something something something. It's really long. Input all of these letters and digits into eBay. You need to find a controller for this panel. So assuming that your panel is LM40, this is the controller that you'll need. It's about $28, not bad. And shipping is pretty fast if you're in the United States. I know that it says Shenzhen, China, but it's really pretty fast within one week to the United States. On the top of the mirror, you should see this controller board right here. It has a bunch of wires going into it. This whole board right here is useless, so go ahead and start disconnecting everything. The camera module is right here. Disconnect that as well. When you remove the camera, you'll see there's a big hole a big gaping hole. Be sure to use blackout tape, like electrical tape, and you can cover the hole up. That way, it won't distract you later on, and you'll see why. So yeah, this whole controller board area is pretty much useless. Here's a quick overview of all of these cables and functionalities. This is the power supply cable. You'll be connecting this power supply cable right here. It has a loop. It will go into the power supply of the TV. This huge cable bundle right here will be going straight into the panel for providing backlight. It replaces the gray cable that you saw earlier. Here's a second cable that will go into the power supply of the TV. This back cable right here will be going into the back of the TV. We really don't need this extension board. You can disconnect it right here if you want, and I'll show you how to deal with it later on. Here's the gray cable that we disconnected. This provides power to the backlights of the TV. You no longer need that, so go ahead and remove that. Insert this new cable going in. It only fits one way, so don't try to go the other way. After inserting the power supply for the backlights, go ahead and put the metal cover back in. Four Phillips screws is holding this thing in place. Next up, let's connect the video cable from the new board into this TV panel. Again, it only goes one way, so don't try to force it to go another way. I know that the colors and the orientation of this cable does not match the old cable, but it's okay. It will work. This is the power supply of the panel, by the way. You can go ahead and remove some of the old cables, such as here. This bottom cable right here is hot glue in, but if you spend some time, you should be able to lift the whole thing up. Once you remove the old cables, go ahead and insert the new power supply for the new motherboard. Be sure of polarity, as you can see here, the black is on top, red is on the bottom. You can see that this special bundle is connected to the switch. That means when you flip the switch of the mirror on, it will turn on the TV. We want the same switch to be working with the new motherboard as well.
you want the loop to be oriented downward, as seen here. Cut that loop and connect it to the switch. Before cutting the loop though, I just want to verify that the board is working, the backlight is working, the video signal is working, so I'm just going to hook up this Chromecast. The Chromecast uses 5 volt micro USB cable, so go ahead and plug that into the wall. Now that the Chromecast is plugged in and powered up, go ahead and plug this cable for the mirror into the wall as well. Since we haven't cut the black loop and connect the power switch from the mirror, we have to use this motherboard right here. The extension motherboard has this on and off button, so of course we're going to need that on and off button. Press the on button to turn the TV on. If everything is working fine, you should see this from the Chromecast. Excellent. Let's proceed. Alright, let's take care of that loop. Here you can see the switch has two wires. We're going to use the two wires from the switch and connect it into that loop. So the loop core will be cut to become two wires. The two wires will connect to the two wires of the switch, if that makes any sense. In this video, you can clearly see that the two wires right now is joining to this other two wires that was the loop. To reuse the speakers, it's relatively simple. The red board is the amplifier, by the way. In another video, I'm going to show you how to use it with the amplifier, but for now, for simplicity, we're just going to use it as is, straight into the new motherboard. The red wire is positive, the black wire is negative. In the back of the motherboard, you can clearly see all of the speaker's connection. There's left minus, left positive, right positive, right minus. I solder all of the connections down to secure it. And now we can connect it to the speakers that's uh, in the mirror. Be careful with polarity. I honestly don't think it matters, but just in case. The sound is not crystal clear and super loud without the amplifier, but it's good enough for now, assuming that you're just going to use this as a smart mirror. And that's it for now. We will continue with part 2 in another video on how to get a Raspberry Pi in to make it work as a smart mirror, or you can always connect a laptop, a portable laptop, rip out the whole thing, insert it via the HDMI input to get YouTube up and running again. Hopefully this video helps you on how to rip out the old controller, insert the new controller, and connect everything back in. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.